Now, we will come to another type of diagram. This we call subdivided bar diagram or subdivided chart. Now, take the example here. Here you will see I have given one example to show the subdivided bar diagram. Now, the example says the table given table shows production of rice, wheat and sugar cane in India during 2008 to 2011. Now, draw subdivided bar diagram. So, data is given to you regarding three crops. Now, you can say that three variables are given here. So, this why to draw the subdivided bar diagram? I can draw the multiple or three bar chart also, triple bar diagram. You are right. It can be shown in triple bars also. It can be shown in subdivided form also. Right? For comparison, we can take this type of distribution or the triple bar chart anyways. But if you want to show that this is the production of rice, wheat and sugar cane and you want to show the total also in this case and you have you want to show that out of total what is the contribution of rice, wheat and sugar out of the total production. Then in that case subdivided bar is more suitable. The example what I gave you for primary, secondary and tertiary sector there was no total given. Only three sectors were given and the contribution of each sector in percentage was given. Right? Now, that data was more suitable for triple bar chart. Here we have rice, wheat, sugar cane and total production also. So, total we can show with the help of subdivided bar diagram. Now, let us see how. Again, O y axis production in 1000 tons. O x axis we have taken the years as I gave you earlier. Now, one thing here, year you can divide 2007 to 8, 2008 to 9, 9 to 10, 10 to 11 because 4 years description is given here and similarly divide O y axis according to the highest figure given over here. See the highest figure this is 209. So, take the division accordingly. I have taken till 240 because there is a gap of 40 and 2009 is in this category. Right? There is no need to take more than 240 over here. Right? So, in this case at the interval of 40, we have taken 6 divisions here. Equal divisions and this side 4 bars for each year. 1 for each year. Now, what you have to do in this subdivided bar diagram? First, in the case of 2007 and 8, what is the total production? 160. Now, make a bar till the length of 160 first thing, right? Make the bar, total 4 bars you make according to the data given here. This is the total length. So, 160, second is 166, third year it was 192 fourth year 209. So, the total length of the bar will be according to this total production. Right? Then after this, what is the next step? Take first one. Production of rice was 46. So, mark 46 over here. This is for rice. Second is 64. Now, if you just mark down 64 here, that means total production of rice will be only 64 minus 46 only that means 18 only right but production of wheat is 64 so what you will do you have taken here 46 is for rice and then for wheat it is 64 then what is the total 6 4 10 110 so till 110 you draw the second division and the rest will be for sugar cane that is 50. 110 we have taken here what is left that is 50 and 50 is for sugar cane. Right? So, when we are dividing it first figure just mark down here second you have to add up in this then mark here 
and third automatically will be the leftover one, right. So, whether it is three variables given here in the subdivision may be 4, 5, 6 whatever. So, accordingly you will first add up and then draw the further divisions. Take the second one also in the second one this is 49 and next one is 72 that makes 121. So, first one you will draw the division you will take till 49 next you will take at 121 right and the left over 45 will be for sugar cane. Same way you will add up this and this take the second division here add up this and this take the second division here and third will be the whatever is left that will be third division. So, this way the whole total production is shown and this at a glance tells you now again you have to make the index to show the symbols over here or the colors whatever you are using. Again this shows that in a particular year this was the total production out of this this much was for rice, rice we have taken 46. So, this should be rice right. So, 46 then 64 for wheat and then whatever that is sugar cane. So, this way you have to show the subdivisions and the total this gives at a glance that this was the total production how much was the contribution of rice, wheat and sugar cane. This helps in making the comparison between the production of three different crops right. So, this way you can draw the subdivided bar diagram which helps again helps in making the comparison and remember that separate colors are used for each division or you can say separate symbols or you can say any mark whatever you are making that should be separate for each division and for each variable. And this subdivided bar diagram is suitable when the total of any or total of all three variables is given then this is more suitable and when only three variables are given total is not given then you can have triple bar diagram also right. So, children I think bar diagram is very interesting for you and you must have followed clearly and you will be able to draw any data whatsoever given to you and in your exercise or assignment you will find different numericals or data given to you and you will be asked to draw the diagram or graph or you can say bar charts on the basis of the data given. This is when after understanding all this you will be able to decide that which type of bar chart is more suitable for which particular type of given data percentage bar diagram. Now, let us see how we draw the percentage bar diagrams. Now, first I will tell you what is the meaning of percentage bar diagram. These diagrams show different parts of the values of a set of data in percentages. As the name denotes percentage, so in this way the percentage bar diagram they show the values of any particular detail in the form of percentages. Now, these diagrams they show different parts of the values of set of data in percentages. So, this way percentage bar diagrams are defining the data or explaining the values in the form of percentage. All the bars here are drawn on the basis of percentage. This means that the values which are given to us that has to be converted into percentage first then we can draw the diagram and if already the values are given in percentage then you need not convert it again. So, if the values are given in percentage then directly you will draw the diagram on the basis of the values given otherwise you have to convert the values into percentages. Now, in this percentage bar diagram 
there are three characteristics mainly total length of the bar is assumed to be 100 right as you have done earlier in the simple bar diagram and in the multiple bar diagrams or even in subdivided bar diagrams the length of the bar was on the basis of the given values but here the length of the bar will be on the basis of percentage and all the total length of the bar will be 100 only so this means that all the bars will be of same length breadth of the bar and length of the bar was same in the earlier bar diagrams but here the length will be 100 that will be the same but the breadth will vary according to the total value this i'll explain to you with the help of an example then it will be more clear to you but one characteristic you should know that total length of the bar is assumed to be 100 in the percentage bar diagram each part is shown as a part of 100 so when you are dividing the bar on the basis of the given values then each part will be a part of 100 because it is on the percentage basis and comparison is again on the basis of percentage not on the basis of absolute values as we have done earlier now let us take an example to make it clear to you now in this case what example i have taken we have taken the expenditure of two families this is an imaginary example suppose we are taking the expenditure in rupees of family a and family b now for the explanation sake or to simplify the explanation we have taken only few items right and the values these are also imaginary it can differ according to the expenditure of the family now in this case first item is furniture in which family a is spending 500 and family b is spending 300 rupees per month second electricity bill family a expenditure is 200 family b is 60 rent 150 and 80 water bill 50 and 20 and the other expenditure which we have not specified here another category we have taken as miscellaneous and here family a has 100 rupees and family b has allotted 40 rupees for miscellaneous expenditure now the total of family a is 1000 whereas family b is 500 that means in a month family a is spending double of family b family b is spending 500 rupees per month and family a is spending 1000 rupees per month now for making the percentage bar diagram you have to take out the percentage of this because this data is not given in percentage so first you have to take out the percentage and on the basis of percentage you will divide the bar into different parts remember the length of the bar will be how much that will be always 100 right so how to take out the percentage this i have explained to you here now family a and family b this is in two parts now family a the expenditure of family a is this much what i have noted down here now first we will take out the cumulative value of it cumulative value how to take out this as you have done in cumulative frequency distribution uh, this added up 500 is here so one is first is 500 add up 200 then it becomes 700 150 then 850 700 plus 150 is 850 850 plus 50 is 900 then again added up that becomes 1000 so total cumulative value of expenditure family a is 1000 which is the same as here this is the total this figure will be the same as this one now we have to take out the percentage expenditure then only we can divide the bar into different parts how to take out the percentage this will be 500 divided by total into 100 this means 5 2 
this is 50. So, first percentage is 50, right. So, this way we will take out the percentage expenditure out of the total. So, 500 divided by 1000 is equal to 50, this is equal to 50 here. Same way, we will take out 700 divided by 1000, that is 20, then this one divided by 1000 into percentage is 15, then next is this and this and the total of this will be 100 because we are taking the percentage. Next column shows cumulative percentage. Why do we have to calculate cumulative percentage? Because when we are dividing the bar, then you need to have the cumulative percentage to divide the bar on the basis of added up expenditure. Then it becomes easier to divide the bar. Here 50, first one 50 plus 20 is 70, this again 85, then again added up 90 and then 100, right. This becomes the cumulative percentage of family A. This is the cumulative expenditure in percentage of family A. Similarly, we have taken the expenditure of family B. Total expenditure of family B on different items is given here, same one total is 500, again cumulative value is 300 plus 60, again added up like this, it becomes 500, the same figure, this is same as this one, then percentage again calculated in the same manner, this is here it is 300, total is how much, total is 500 into 100, this is 5, this becomes 60, so first percentage is 60, right. So, this way we have got percentage expenditure of family B 60, then again this one, divi this one divided by 100, then again we get the percentage as we got the percentage expenditure in the case of family A. Now, fourth column again we will add up the percentage expenditure and we get the cumulative percentage expenditure, got it? So, this way first we have to note down the data, if it is already given in percentage then you need not to convert it into percentage, you just have to take out the cumulative percentage and plot the graph. If the data is not given in percentage then this way you will convert it into percentage and take out the cumulative percentage and then plot the graph. Now, let us see how the graph is plotted on the basis of percentage. Now, we will move to this part where we have taken the graph. Remember the breadth of the rectangle is on the basis of ratio. As I told you in the case of percentage bar diagram, length will always be 100, but breadth may not be the same. It depends upon the ratio of different values. Here in this case, family expenditure, total of family expenditure is 1000 rupees, total of family B is 500. So, this is in the ratio of 2 is to 1, right. This means that the expenditure of family A is just double of expenditure of family B, 2 is to 1. This indicates that the breadth of bar showing the expenditure of family A will be double and family B will be half. This will be double, 2 is to 1. That means whatever breadth we are taking for this family B, this breadth will be just double to it right because it is the ratio of 2 is to 1. Now, here the bar is drawn, the expenditure is taken on this side and the total expenditure what we have take converted into percentage that will be on the basis of this figure given here, this is 100. So, total length of the bar in the case of family A as well as family B will be 100 that will be the same, but here as you see the breadth will be different. 
family B is just half of family A because the expenditure is also half and the ratio is 2 is to 1. So, the breadth of this family A expenditure is just double of this family B, right. Now, what is the next step? Here from this data, you will take out the, you will just go through this cumulative percentage, this one and this one. Now, according to this data, you will divide the bar. Family A first is 50. So, you will divide it till 50 over here. Then next is 70. So, you do not have to add up. You just move on to 70 and draw the line here. Then again next go to 85. Here again. Then next is 90 and rest is the remainder that is till 100. So, this way different divisions are made and each division is shaded by different either by different color or by different sign or symbol so that we can distinguish it. Now, in the first case here this 50 cumulative percentage that was for furniture that is 500. So, this first division is for furniture as it is shown in the index. Second is for electricity bill as shown here. Third is for rent. Fourth is for water bill and the last one is for miscellaneous, right. Same way here in family B. First division it is 60. So, divide it till 60, draw a line here, take the next division and so on and use the same symbol for both the bars just to make the comparison clear and easier to understand, right. So, and remember that whatever symbols or signs you are showing here that you have to clarify here that what particular symbol is indicating, right. So, percentage bar diagram are very easy to draw and on the basis of the data given first you have to convert data into percentage remember and then draw the bar accordingly. Now, I will tell you that what is the difference uh, you have learnt ab earlier about the subdivided bar diagram and here now we have taken percentage bar diagram. What is the basic difference between the two? Basic difference is that in the subdivided bar diagram you are comparing the parts comparison is two dimensional in the subdivided bar diagram you are comparing the parts as well as the whole. But in the percentage bar diagram you are not able to compare the whole because whole is always given in percentage. You can compare the values only in term of percentages or in the term of subdivisions made but you cannot compare on the absolute basis as it is possible in the case of subdivided bar diagram. So, percentage bar diagram is always on percentage basis and the comparison is always made on the percentage basis. I think it is clear to you. Now, next time next what I will be telling you that will be pi diagram another form of diagram that is pi diagram right. Children, now we will take the explanation of pi diagram. This pi diagram, this is another method to show the distribution of values of different parts in the form of percentage basis. As we have done percentage bar diagram, this is another way to represent the data on the percentage basis with the help of pi diagram. Though pi diagrams can also be drawn on the basis of absolute values, but in the case of absolute values you have to draw two circles to show the data because the absolute values will be different and that will be a little difficult task. So, in that case normally pi diagrams are drawn on the basis of percentage basis for general explanation. Okay. Now, we will see what are the pi diagrams. It is a very simple and attractive way of representing various components of a total in percentage. It is again shown on the basis of percentage 
and it is a very simple and attractive way of showing the data on the percentage basis. So, it is also known as angular diagram or pi chart, right. Now, what are the features of pi diagram? First, total angle of the circle is 360 degree as the distribution is shown on the basis of a circle and you know the circle has 360 degrees. So, the whole data is shown with a circle having 360 degrees or 2 pi and that is why it is known as pi diagram because the total circle is equal to 2 pi or 360 degrees. Second, comparatively easier to draw. What do you mean by comparatively easier to draw? In comparison to subdivided bar diagrams or other diagrams what you have learned. In comparison to all children this is comparatively easier to draw and it looks more attractive. And you know what is a pie? It is like it is a pizza, you have seen the pizza, you cut the pies, the, the pieces. So, here the circle is drawn and each piece is showing different values. So, it is very attractive and easier to draw. Third is it is suitable for making comparisons. When the pi diagram is made, different components are drawn on the basis of dividing the circle into different parts. Then each part will show different values and the comparison can be made that which part is bigger and which is smaller. So, at a glance comparison becomes easier and circle has 360 degrees and each angle is shown on the basis of the value given it is easier to emphasize a particular area of distribution that will be more clear to you when we will be learning about the shape of the diagram. So, these are the four features it is it has the angle of 360 degrees it is easier to draw it is suitable for making comparisons and it is useful in emphasizing areas. So, these are the four main features of pi diagram. Now, let us move to the limitations. One is as you have to show the percentage on the basis of angles, sometimes a lot of calculations are involved because the total value what is given in percentage, if it is not given in percentage, first again you will convert it into percentage and when you have converted them into percentage, again you have to convert them into angles because according to the converted degree of angles only, you will be able to divide the circle into different parts. So, sometimes it needs lot of calculation. So, this is one limitation of pi diagram it involves lot of calculations. Second, when it involves lot of calculations, then obviously there are chances of errors also. So, you have to be more particular in calculations. Second, it is not suitable in case of number of components is large. Now, as I told you, it has 360 degrees, it is a circle and if the number of components are very large, then each angle is shown with the help of protector or you can say the whole circle is divided into different angles and if there are 20, 30, 40 subparts, then naturally the diagram will be little complicated and difficult to draw because each and every angle is difficult to draw in the small circle. So, sometimes it becomes little difficult, but if the items are less or components are less, then it is considered a very useful and attractive way to show the percentage values. Okay. Now, these are two limitations. Now, next we come to what are the steps? We come to the steps of making the pi diagram, then I will tell you with an example the shape of the pi diagram. Now, first step is express each component value as a percentage of their respective totals. It is also drawn in percentage. So, each component value should be converted into percentage of the total. 
second circle should form the complete angle of 360 degrees the total whole circle is to be drawn having the angle of 360 degrees then third calculate degrees of all components by the formula degree of component is equal to component value upon total value into 360 right this is the degree of component 360 is the angle so on the basis of this we will get the total degree of angles for each component fourth if percentage value not given first calculate the percentage value then the degree of angles right so if percentage value is given then directly you can apply the formula and calculate the angle but if percentage value is not given then first convert the data into percentage value and then calculate the angles fifth draw circle of appropriate size and divide it into parts according to their angles another step is that when you are drawing the circle make sure that you are drawing the circle of an appropriate size there is no fixed size for any particular value so you can take any size because we are drawing it on a percentage basis not on the absolute basis in the absolute basis you have to draw circle on the basis of their values one circle may be small and another may be big and then two dimensional comparison is made but when we are drawing the percentage pi diagram or pi diagram on the percentage basis then you do not have to take any particular size of the circle but make sure that whatever size of the circle you are taking that should be appropriate appropriate in the sense that that should be appealing to the eye it should not be very big or it should not be very small it should be of appropriate size and according to the angles then divide the circle into different parts so draw circle of appropriate size and divide it into parts according to their angles next place largest component at 12 o'clock position when you are drawing the circle draw the circle first clearly and then start dividing the circle into different parts starting from the 12 o'clock position that means move clockwise from 12 o'clock position and remember that the largest angle should be taken first and then all of the angles should be taken in the descending magnitude right so here place largest component at 12 o'clock position place other components clockwise in descending order of magnitude that means second largest then third largest then the fourth one and so on and component labeled as miscellaneous is shown at the last clear now i'll take you to the diagram or explanation with the help of an imaginary example here the data what is given that is about direction of exports and the countries four countries we have taken here and the exported percentage here the values are given in percentage now this is imaginary data and with the help of this we will see how to draw the pi diagram now first country is USA export to USA is 25 percent we are imagining that India is exporting 25 percent of its exports to USA 15 percent to Japan 30 percent to UK 20 percent to China and other countries 10 percent so this is an imaginary data now as i told you first this is the percentage given you need not convert the data into percentage again it is already given clear now what is the next step we have to calculate the degrees of angles right now how to calculate the degrees of angle this is the formula i gave you component value upon total value into 360 so here in this case component value is 25 and total value is this is total value is 100 so 25 upon 100 into 360 is 90 degree so 90 degree angle is showing export to USA 
next is 15 upon 100 into 360 54 then 30 upon 160 108 20 upon 100 into 360 72 degree then 10 upon 100 into 360 is 36 degree now this we have calculated the angles that means out of the total circle of 360 degrees how many degrees are allotted for each component let us move to the diagram now on the basis of this data given now the diagram here as the data shows 108 percentage that is for UK as I told you place the largest component at 12 o'clock position and this is the 12 o'clock position largest angle is 108 degree right so out of this 108 degree is equal to for UK this is 90 this is 72 degree 54 and 30 right so uh, 12 o'clock position 108 is for UK next is second largest there is 90 that is for USA then next largest is China this is the same symbol you are supposed to use here next is Japan and the last one that is 36 degree that is the lowest magnitude that has to be for others right so this way the whole circle is divided into different parts on the basis of data given and on the basis of angles of 360 degree or angles of a circle calculated previously this is known as pi diagram now when you are drawing a diagram remember certain things you have to keep in mind again I will revise it the circle should be for 360 degree angle the whole circle has to be drawn then each part is taken clockwise that means you are starting from 12 o'clock position and moving this way clockwise and place the largest component first then the second largest then the third largest so in, in this case go on moving on the basis of magnitude and the last one should be the lowest magnitude or it may be if it is little higher may be but always place the other in the end suppose it is more than 36 it is more than 54 over here by chance then also the others are always placed at the end so this is a pi diagram which is showing the components on the percentage basis right so this completes your diagrams over here and next time I will be telling you about the frequency diagrams.